Good morning and welcome to our service of morning prayer on Sunday the 29th of March, the fifth Sunday of Lent. This is our second week of virtual services for Christ Church Barnton and St Luke's Winnington and I'm really glad you've been able to join with us today. I hope that you're coping at home and find our videos helpful in feeling we're still in fellowship together. We have a wonderful team of people trying to keep everyone in contact but if anyone has not heard from one of us yet please do get in touch because we'd love to hear from you. We have a wonderful Saviour in Jesus and God is always ready to hear from you when you open up your heart in prayer and these services are there to support your daily walk with God. And so now in the comfort of your own home let's begin together. O Lord open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory forever. As a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, your only son was lifted up, that he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of the cross, and always be ready to share its weight, declaring your love for all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word. Our Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah 31, 27 to 37. The days are coming says the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of humans and the seed of animals, and just as I have watched over them to pluck up and break down, to overthrow, destroy and bring evil, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days they shall no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge, but all shall die for their own sins and the teeth of everyone who eats sour grapes shall be set on edge. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Thus says the Lord, who gives a sun for light by day and a fixed order of the moon and stars for light by night, who stirs up the sea so that the waves roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. If this fixed order were ever to cease from my presence, says the Lord, then also the offspring of Israel would cease to be a nation for me, before me forever. Thus says the Lord, if the heavens can be measured, and the foundations of the earth below can be explored, then I'll reject all the offspring of Israel because of all they've done, says the Lord. Our old New Testament reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 20 to 33. Now among them, those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? 
Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, the voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. We wish to see Jesus. On the 28th of February 1949, Jim Elliot wrote in his journal, He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain which he cannot lose. In 1956, he lost his life trying to bring the gospel to the Wayadani people in Ecuador. So the Wayadani didn't hear the gospel from Jim Elliot, but they saw Jesus in his wife Elizabeth as she came with their three-year-old daughter Valerie to live with the people who had killed Jim. Because Elizabeth had studied Greek at college, she could translate God's word into the Wayadani language. But it was the risen life of Jesus in her that shone into the hearts of these Amazon warriors. In 1998, she had a program Gateway to Joy, and always open up with Jeremiah 31, 3. You are loved with an everlasting love. And nearly 60 years after Jim, and after 10 years of dementia, Elizabeth went to be with the Lord. Our New Testament reading tells us that Greeks, which John means not Jewish, wished to see Jesus. They didn't want miracles or to hear teaching, they wished to see him. Jesus didn't reply to their request, instead he spoke to his disciples about having a fruitful death and uses a very Jewish description, contrasting life and death, love and hatred. He's calling us to love and embrace a life which is eternal and overcomes death, not to love a life which is only temporary. Jesus' contrast between love and hate can be illustrated from Genesis 29 in the Old Testament. A man called Jacob married two sisters, Leah and Rachel, but he loved Rachel so much Leah is described as unloved. Moses describes a marriage as the origin of the tribes of Israel and not as a biblical model for the ideal family. And if you read Genesis, it gets even more complicated, but that's another sermon. Jacob's love for Rachel must have seemed to Leah like he hated her. I don't think he did, but his focus was always Rachel. Because Leah felt unloved, she learned to thrive anyway and worshipped God, not their difficult marriage. Moses had to write in Deuteronomy 21.15 about inheritance when there were two wives. So it seems they were still working through these issues generations later. But you can see in the Bible, just like Leah, the unloved being fruitful. And Moses, King David and Jesus were all descended from Leah. God made the world to be fruitful, but if we love the creation more than the creator, we lose our eternal perspective. Our love for God can make our care for this world as hatred. Not that we hate this life, but we hate death and disease, depression and anxiety, fear and greed, prejudice and selfishness. We can love God with our whole heart, but this life is short and the love of this life is short-lived. It can become bitter when life gets hard and sickness and death corrupt it. The love of God is eternal and stronger than the grave. If we set our hearts on God, he is able to redeem what he made good. For there's nothing in this life that we will miss if we gain eternal life. What looks like a contradiction really means don't love a life which will end with death and you will keep a permanent and eternal life. It starts here and now and never ends. And the key to this is Jesus himself. In our text, the Greeks aren't ready for Jesus yet. He is still preaching to the Jews and teaching his disciples and preparing them for his sacrifice. 
His entry into Jerusalem and the last Passover supper is all leading up to the cross. The disciples and the Jewish crowd don't get it yet. Jesus himself is deeply troubled about what is going to happen. To be crucified is a horrific way to die. And though he knows he will conquer, he is human and still feels the horror. He asks his disciple a rhetoric question. Should he ask the Father to save him? He answers himself actually, this is for the Father's glory and the heavens quake with the Father's voice. The temporary weight of Jesus' sacrifice was for the eternal weight of the Father's glory to reconcile lost sinners for eternal life. In the cross, the world is judged. The world is not worthy of Jesus because the world is ruled now by evil. But all evil is driven out by Jesus' incredible act of self-giving love, a sacrifice which draws all kinds of people to himself. The entire Old Testament sums up that all the laws in the world written down on stone or paper can't save humanity from itself. The Old Testament closes and the words of Moses, Psalms and prophets wait to be fulfilled. No amount of good works and setting yourself apart is enough. We should be all looking out for family, friends and neighbours because it's the right thing to do. With or without faith but it doesn't give us eternal life. The prophet Jeremiah declares that God himself will write his new covenant on our hearts, and I love that. Before the New Testament was written down, before any church building was built, before there was any communion table with bread and wine, before anything remotely resembling our church gatherings, there was the cross where Jesus died, taking the weight of humanity's sinfulness upon himself, satisfying the righteousness of God and exchanging his perfect life for our broken lives, giving us eternal life. Jesus loved you and I so much, he despised the passing pleasures of this world, marriage, children, money, comfort, fame and security, to gain a family from all the nations of the world. The Greeks wanted to see Jesus, but they weren't ready to see him till they saw him after the cross, after the tomb where they laid him on Good Friday. They needed to see him risen and alive and living in his disciples. Our families, our neighbours, our colleagues and the whole world wish to see Jesus. Not a statue, not a picture or perfect church. They want to see Jesus alive, conquering fear and death in us. That we're not afraid of death because we have eternal life, because we have Jesus. And if we wish to see Jesus, we only have to ask, because we live in the risen life Jesus died to give us, and he lives always to show himself to us, and the Father will be glorified and glorified again for all eternity. Amen. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 1.18, The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. Let us pray. With faith and love and together with Christ, let us offer our prayer before the throne of grace. Have mercy on your people, for whom your Son laid down his life. Bring healing and wholeness to people and nations of the whole world and have pity on those torn apart by division and isolation. Help our government humbly to seek your wisdom to lead. Heal our Prime Minister, Prince Charles and all who have responsibility to serve the nation. Heal all who are sick and restore them. Thank you for all key workers Protect and strengthen all working in the NHS. Bless those who deliver food, medicine and other supplies. Bless those who work to keep our communities safe. May they know Jesus' love and salvation and our appreciation. Restrain all in our community who are tempted to disregard the safety of others, but draw them to Jesus and be settled by his peace. Strengthen all who are persecuted for your name's sake and deliver, deliver them from evil. 
help believers released from prison in Iran to find family and shelter and be a light again in their communities. Help all our brothers and sisters throughout the world who suffer for following Jesus, restrain terror and strengthen your church. Look in mercy on all who suffer and hear those who cry out in pain, desolation and loneliness. Bring comfort to the dying and gladden the hearts with the vision of your glory. Give rest to the departed and bring them with your saints to glory everlasting. Let us commend the world for which Christ died to the mercy and protection of God and salvation for the lost. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>